All right, this video is incredibly niche. <laughs> I want to talk about a bug in one small part of a workflow when you're trying to make a specific effect inside the fusion page. Um, but even if you aren't a fusion expert, along the way, I think I'm going to show off some pretty cool things that you could use in any number of effects. Um, but uh, I also want to talk about this one specific thing, because for the right people, it will be very, very exciting. But jumping ahead, we are going to make this effect. Now, if you don't know that much about Resolve or the Fusion page, you might think like, hey, cool. If you do know a bit about Fusion, or if you have tried to make this specific effect before, you might be very interested. Because as far as I know, this was not possible before uh, the launch of DaVinci Resolve 19. I'm gonna talk about why and about uh, why this works now. And uh, the kind of bug I mentioned is the one big weakness in the new method that lets this work. Let's talk about it. All right, first I'm going to try to uh, make this effect the ways I tried previously before DaVinci Resolve 0.9. So we've got a polygon mass that I can draw and I am drawing it with big eased curves. And that is going into a background um, that I'm going to make white. And on that polygon, if I pull up that border width, now we have a line. And hey, at this point, I will go ahead and at frame zero, I'm going to pull length down to zero. And at frame 30, pull length up to one, open up my spline viewer and apply some quick easing on that length. Okay. So we preview that, we've got a line that writes on. Ooh, in this polygon, I am also changing this, uh, sort of the end cap to flat so that at zero, it's, it's totally gone. Cool. Uh, now in the example I showed off, I chose this like uh, right bracket in this like text thing to be sort of an arrowhead, but I'm uh, uh, there are a few ways you can show it off. I'm just gonna type in a lowercase L because this will also show something cool, but it but doesn't have to be like quite as precise I feel like. Okay, now back on that polygon, at the bottom, we have right click for shape animation. I'm gonna right click, remove the polygon polyline, and then right click again and publish that. And over on modifiers, now we have this polygon polyline and on text and on this center position, I'm gonna right click and select path. That will add this modifier for this path. Importantly for this, the center does have to be at 0.5.5. I'm gonna right click on displacement and get rid of that. And back where we have that same right click for shape animation, I'm gonna right click and go to connect to polygon one polyline value. And now we have that line. And if I preview the merge, that line is the line that that text follows along. But we can see that the line is moving, uh, but the asset itself is not moving. Before we do that, uh, on this layout, I'm gonna right click on the Z rotation and connect to path to this one we just created heading. Now this is interesting, watch. This comes along and remember that uh, displacement control we have, there's no keyframes on this right now, but if I slide this along the line, it auto rotates to fit that position, right? So we have this slide, we can put it anywhere we want on this line, this is really cool. So now, if we right click on the displacement and connect to polygon one length, right? We keyframed that draw on. Now we are parenting sort of, this displacement along that path to that length. If I go back to the beginning and then preview this, you will notice, oh no, some interesting things are going on. It is not exact. The line gets uh, above the point, then behind it, and it seems and is the more exaggerated these bevels are and the easing, the worse it looks the greater the disconnect is there, right? Oh, see, like when it gets wild, now this is completely off. Even though uh, both of them are on a zero to one sort of scale, if you have easing on this polygon line, it completely throws it off. And this is in the easing if I grab all of these points and make them linear. Oh, I thought this would fix it, but this doesn't even fix it. Okay, so yeah, there's a disconnect here and it's been, so around for a while, I've wanted to do cool stuff with it, but I've always run into this issue. But, um, uh, okay, I said Resolve 19, I first figured out in Resolve 19 how we could make this work, and then retroactively figured that technically you could figure it out 
before Resolve 19. Uh, but new in Resolve 19, we have this S text node. And, oh, I have a fresh copy here. So in this new node tree, I have an S polygon line that now I can draw something you know squiggly on that. And on text, I will do that same lowercase L, merge it all together, oh, on that polygon, pull up border width, so we got a line and our sort of cap here. Importantly, in this S text node in layout, it has the center as this sort of dual X, Y value. So on this, I can right click and also connect this to a path, even though, even though I haven't done the beginning steps first. The reason it took me seeing this to figure out this new method is because in the standard transform tool or like merge tools, this center is this linked X, Y point value. But in the shape transform, it separates the X and Y. So if you wanted to connect anything else um, like I'm going to, to the beginning of this line, you could do it by plugging into an S transform node, but you would have to sort of create a new control, which I've showed off previously in other videos, and then link the X and Y to the X and Y values of that point control you then create. Multiple steps. Um, if anyone has questions about that, I guess ask, and I might follow up about that, ask in the, ask in the comments. But in S text, we have that uh, point center position, so you can add a text, uh, add a uh, path to it, and then back on S polygon. Again, I'm removing that polyline and then uh, publishing it. Go back in S text on that path. I can connect to S polygon one value. And if you look, it, it, it like stretches the path in weird ways, and now our text is completely gone. And so remember in the original, we changed this center from to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. When dealing inside the shape system, we actually want to change this to zero, zero. The coordinate system is different inside the shape system than outside of it. I'm surprised all these modifiers uh, work in the shape system at all, but you know, you just got to deal with that. I'm also getting rid of this displacement. And right away, I can connect this displacement, connect to S polygon one length, and last a little bit, last a little bit on this S text Z rotation, I am connecting to path three heading. We look, it sort of snaps in the middle. Oh, I connected the wrong displacement. I uh, connected the wrong displacement. I haven't done that yet on this S polygon one frame zero, bring down length frame 30, bring up length, hit them with that little ease. Now on this S text, the rotation on that path, I can right click displacement, connect to S polygon one length, boom, it's at the end. And if I scrub, it is staying exactly with the end point of that line as it draws on. Okay, I know for a lot of people I blitzed through that uh, like I said, niche, and this is specific, but now it comes to the slightly disappointing part. <laughs> this precise effect is something that hasn't been possible in Resolve until now, until now, but as it currently is, it has one massive weakness. That being, if I come to this polygon and change any of these line points and make it longer or shorter, suddenly that endpoint is disconnected again. At this point, I think it's sort of a length thing and not quite an easing thing. It always catches up by the end. It's always there at the beginning and catches up by the end, but any like change in the beginning messes that up. So for a lot of the work I do making presets and templates, I couldn't, you know, give the user control over this path because then it would break the effect. If you're making a lot of like one-off or specific animations, you can now do really, really cool stuff and precise work in Resolve and in the Fusion page that you couldn't previously. And even to like test, if I go back to this S line, if I remove that publish, oh, it removes it, but it still has the path. If I connect back to S polygon, even if I try to reconnect the value, it's not there. Uh, let me try. I will remove it, completely get rid of this. So now it should be floating in the middle of nowhere. Right click, connect to S polygon value. Oh, it has now done interesting things to this displaced. Oops, get rid of that maybe. Yeah, there is still this disconnect. Uh, I just found something. So like, 
this is wild. But if you come back into this insert and modify, if I uh, change the path and then add a point, it snaps right back and is precise again. So uh, I'm this does suddenly do wild things to my keyframes. Point being, uh, it's very finicky. Uh, sometimes, you know, just changing a path will kick stuff over. Um, if you add points to the path, like mid animation, that'll throw things for a loop. But I feel like I just had to get it out there that uh, even in the middle of some things being finicky and not being great for a lot of the work I do with presets and templates, um, this is a completely new kind of. There is a new effect that you are able to do with a very specific method now because of the shape system uh, in the fusion page. Like I said, technically, you could do this before Resolve 19, but I, it works really nice using this center parameter on S text. I would say dive in and mess with this yourself, but um, I would say, hey, people who are very comfortable in fusion or maybe who have tried to do this themselves, you can dive in and check out this specific method. The rest of you, um, you know, uh, uh, don't be scared of fusion. <laughs> this is a lot of what I do sort of in private, <laughs> that's, that's weird. But <laughs> when I'm building out new effects or exploring the Fusion page, um, uh, this is where I spend a lot of my time and effort. So it's cool to share a lot of that exploration and stuff um, with you. If nothing else, this was a dive into the wild world of Fusion. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.